Are you wanting to take a look at how to set up a large scale 3D printing shop? Well, today we're going to look at how I remodeled my shop to accommodate the 12 printers in my air, in my in my keep. So, hope you guys enjoy. Let's hop over and we'll get this video started. Hey guys, welcome to today's video. As I said, today we're going to be talking about the shop. Now, um, as I said in the intro, I've got 12 printers back here. Um, all of them are in one room now. Um, the room's been redone. We've emptied it out. If you saw the last video where I sh kind of showed my setup, go check it out. You'll definitely see a huge difference here as I've really retooled towards 3D printing. But also I want to talk about some of the other tools of the trade that we have in here. So, um, first off, recording courtesy of Canon. The Canon EOS M50 is the camera that I use. This is the second one. I'm currently recording on one right now too that um, we use to collect all the footage for all this. So um, Rode microphones are what we use um, for most of it. Now I will warn you when we move back into the shop it is going to be loud. Um, not much I can do about that. I'm going to try to tailor it down in the editing process. Most of the printers are idle but there are a couple still working right now. So kind of keep that in mind as you watch the video. I do apologize for it now. It is one of those things that we got to keep in mind. It is an active print shop. So um, you will see everything from resin printers as I have the Anycubic Photon Mono X and the Creality LRD002. In the prior video you saw some Elegoo Mars printers. Those printers are now gone. Um, but I do have a small resin setup, but most of my printers are filament based FDM printers. So you're going to see everything. If you haven't caught the videos, go check them out of the CR10 Max, the CR30. Um, I have multiple CR10s back here, and we're going to talk about all those here in a bit, including the Focus Odin F5, uh, Odin 5 F3, um, which love that little printer, by the way, and my Ender 3s. They're all back here, but also kind of a redesign to accommodate more painting, airbrushing, and I hope you guys do enjoy that. If you do enjoy the content on this channel, make sure you hit that subscribe button. Um, every subscriber, that way you get notified of new videos, new content, new things that we're trying to print, um, new updates in printer, the printer world. Um, so make sure you do hit that subscribe button. If you have any questions about 3D printing, whether you're experienced, you're not experienced, thinking of getting into the hobby or you're in the hobby and not sure, just kind of stuck on a point, leave that comment down below. My email address is also on the YouTube uh, main page, so you can always contact me directly. So that is one thing that you can do. Also, just kind of one of those things. Keep it in mind, um, this is all for fun. So 3D printing, while it is a business for me as well, this is also my hobby. So kind of keep that in mind, but we are going to go back into the shop here in a second. We are going to show you a little bit of the studio as well, um, but the shop is the main coup de grace. So let's hop over and let's take a look. Okay guys, so first we're going to kind of start with the room tour. Like I said in the old video, there, the prior video, not a lot has changed in here from what you saw other than some shelving and stuff like that. But again, as you come into my office area, you see the stage where I do a lot of the work. Um, that you see on the video. Um, this is the bench a lot of times when I'm taking something apart and putting it back together. This is where you see me doing it. You see a whole bunch of models that are uh, not either in progress being worked on or some are still in parts. But hey, that's, that's the name of 3D printing. So as you guys come over to the right, you'll see where I actually do the slicing and all that work. Um, I'm blind. Yes, I have big monitors. Uh, well, when you're slicing parts, who knows how many monitors you really need. But also recording and different things are done here too, and some editing. So, and then of course, the, if you saw the prior video, the paint and finishing station. Um, this one's kind of changing around a little bit because of some of the changes back in the shop. Um, but a lot of times models come across here and get kind of finished up before you see them go up to the wall or they go out of here. And of course, you know, a lot of models that you don't normally see on the videos anymore because they're over on these shelves, with the Star Wars ships and just some of my fun toys. Um, Eagle Moss models and different things like that that sometimes I use for comparison when I'm printing some of this stuff. But the real fun, and of course you guys saw the, where I do most of the recording with the Light Ring and the Canon EOS 50 that I mentioned earlier, but where the real work happens is back behind this door. So let's head back there. So if you saw the last video, there's definitely a big change back here. Again. As I said, it's probably going to be loud. Hopefully the audio is not an issue, but all the printers moved to right here. All 12 of them. This is a steel reinforced shelving unit. It is bolted to the wall. It's foam padded, no vibration. 
so the vibration from all the printers and that can't get to each other and they work really well and just on this rack alone is uh, seven printers just on this one big rack then we've got another big massive one and the Ender 3 is living in their own little rack on the other side of me here but we've got everything from a very old not even made anymore Creality Ender 2 we've got three CR10s two of them V2s a V1 all down on the bottom shelf here of course the one we're going to really start seeing footage from is the new Creality CR30 print mill if you guys are curious about this one go check out my unboxing video um, in regard to this guys but we're going to start seeing some Iron Man stuff coming out of this one and some other Star Wars stuff coming up We've got a CR10 B3 with a direct drive extruder. Um, all my filament is on these racks or up above the printer. It's all pulled down to the printers to keep them out in the way so the printers can be closer together. And of course down here we've got the Odin F5 or Odin 5 F3, sorry, that uh, was sent to me by Focus. I love this little printer. The Ender 3 used to be my recommended beginner printer. I hate to say it, this guy has totally beaten the Ender 3 out of that title in my opinion. Four bolts, level your bed, you're printing. That is an awesome thing to do where a Creality Ender 3, you're probably going to spend about two hours putting it together. So it is a great right out of the box, get started and learn how to print. And what's even awesome about that one, it's got the direct drive extruder. Then you guys see these arms coming down from the top. Um, on all the levels, that's all the webcams that captures all the time-lapse footage that you guys see from these printers. Um, these arms are all 3D printed, they're all movable, and they connect into the Raspberry Pis and Octoprint. If you're curious what Octoprint is, go check out that video. I've got a how-to on how to set that up. All these guys are connected to Octoprint for recording and management and control. So as we move back here to this big guy, this is my CR10 Max. So in the old shop, the same shelving unit held two CR10s. It takes a one shelving unit to hold the Max by itself. And I had to turn it sideways to get it to fit to be able to work back here. And right now it's printing a uh, Miranda class Starship from Star Trek that um, you may have saw the short where this was printing one and about finished. I'm using different filaments to do some comparison between the two filament types. So printing a second one so I can have some fun painting these in different formats and styles because they're different iterations and as we move upward here's resin land so this is where all my resin printing is done I did downsize from what it used to be I've got a Creality LRD002 and I've got the Anycubic Photon Mono X when the Photon Mono X came in kind of eliminated the need for some of the smaller printers so they went out to new homes and I've also got the Anycubic Wash and Cure Plus so they can accommodate the size but and then this tub here is used for cleaning and all my tools that I use with resin printing when it's in that unclean state, uncured state. That way everything gets closed up in the box and we don't get anywhere or get debris anywhere or resin that could be harmful to a pet or anything like that. Um, it's all kind of contained in there and then cleaned out. Then as we move back to the main area, of course down here we've got my 3D printed trash can with my bits of shame. Um, we all have a shame, shame, and that's where my parts of shame are right now. But as we move back over here, this is an IKEA tower that I built using three IKEA, um, I forget the name of the tables, but they're basically three coffee tables with some 3D printed joints and different things to hold my Ender 3. So I've got an Ender 3 V2 and an Ender 3 Pro. Now the V2, it's working on something for the shop because I'm still kind of building this other area, but as you come in here, you can see the tool benches and everything are lined up. This is where I'm gonna start doing a lot more painting and finishing specifically with the airbrushing. Um, I wanna kinda of get the models more cleaned up and present you guys with actual finished products, but also take you through my painting process. So that's kinda of one of the things I haven't brought to the channel that I'm gonna start kinda of adding in. So we may see printing a model, then we may see finishing a model. So that may become multiple videos um, as models come through, because when you've got big models like this, I mean, this is going to take some time to finish. It's just the sheer size of it. Um, so I've got my airbrushing station all set up that is vented outside, so I can print, so I can paint back here with the airbrushes safely. Even though I mo mainly use acrylic paints, safety is still a concern. We've got all kinds of filament storage, paint storage, and of course, you know, got to have a TV back here so I can watch YouTube when I'm painting myself um, to keep myself entertained and going. Because yeah, who wants to be bored? And of course, you know, in storage and stuff like that, 
here's my big box of shame, but it may be a box of shame, but it's a box of kit bashing. So those parts are specifically kept so that I can make them into something else, whether they're supports, failed prints. Just because a print fails doesn't mean you have to throw it away. You can do all kinds of stuff with it. You're only limited by your own imagination. So guys, that's the shop. That's the major changes as we open up more room. The printers are back here. We went from like four or five printers up to 12 now um, in this shop and we're producing all kinds of stuff at this time. And I wanted to get this video out because I need to get them all back to work. So, and that's what I need to do is also get back to work. So we'll hop over to the finish. We'll see you guys. All right guys, that's the setup. I hope you guys enjoyed. Um, remember if you're new here or um, you're just interested, hit that subscribe button, join the crew. So that way you get notified of all the new videos. And also if you got any questions, leave those comments down below and I'll try to get them back to you. So thank you guys. I hope you enjoyed the video. We'll catch you in the next video. Maybe trying to print some cool stuff behind me. See you guys later.